Welcome back to Stab the Dragon Productions for episode number 100, I think. yippee ki Tonight we're back at the Texas Whiskey Tournament, the Rye Division, for the seventh matchup. Previous matches have included Acre Texas Rye 80 proof, lost to Blackland Rye 83 proof in an all Fort Worth matchup. Lockwood versus Oak and Eden, Ryan Spire, both at 90 proof. Lockwood squeaked out a win. Third matchup was Oak and Eden, Rye and Rar IPA. That's a beer, a local beer. Versus Lead Slingers fighting Spirit Rye out of Moore, Oklahoma, both at 90 proof. And the Lead Slingers won, and it wasn't even close. And Oak and Eden's fantastic. So, fourth, Devil's River Rye versus Herman Marshall. Rye. Devil's River at 90, Herman Marshall at 92, and Herman Marshall with the win. Fifth, Milan and Green, Port Finished, 94 proof, versus Still Austin, 99.6, with Still Austin the winner. Sixth, last time we met, the Acre Rye Rum Finished Cask at 100, Giant Texas Rye at 100, and Acre with the win. In all of these matchups, I've not had one whiskey that I would consider bad. They were all good. Several were very good, and a few are just outstanding. What are my rules? What am I looking for here with this whiskey tournament? Which whiskey has the better rye flavor? That's the bottom line here. In the event of a tie, I'll use the cost and availability as the tiebreaker. Now, this is a double elimination tournament. Which means that after we determine the winner, the best of 16 Texas Rye whiskeys, the losers will then compete against each other. And the winner of the loser bracket will get to challenge the winner of the winner's bracket for the championship. But there's a complicating curveball that I'm throwing into the loser's bracket. The deciding factor will be overall flavor. Which whiskey I actually prefer the best not just the best rye flavor. That's a little bit different. Then, after the tournament is over, I'll do another bracket that pits some standard ryes from the rest of the country against the Texas ryes. How do Texas ryes stand up against industry leaders? So that's in the future. Tonight's competitors. First of all, coming out of Waco, Texas, we have Balconis Texas Rye, 100 proof. This rye is my personal favorite to win the whole tournament. This whiskey, however, is a very controversial whiskey because it's odd. I've read lots of reviews and a lot of people do not like this whiskey because it's odd. Others think it's pretty good, but none that I have seen are as wild about it as I have been. This is a certified Texas whiskey, 100% rye is the mash bill age for over two years. Goody Goody lists it for $39.99. Spec Slicker $40.73. Total Wine $39.99. <coughs> Next competitor, Blackland Rye Whiskey. 100 proof. This is a Fort Worth whiskey and it's the second rye issued from the Blackland Distillery. The 83 proof won its first matchup against Acre Texas Rye, 80 proof. This rye is perhaps, the, the mash bill for this is confusing. The bottle says one thing, the website says something else. The website has changed from what it used to say. So they used to import whiskey from a distillery in Minnesota, but they used Texas Triticale and some Texas Rye. I'm not sure. Going off the website now, it looks like they only use Texas rye here. Uh, the owner said this is grain to glass. So that tells me that this is all Texas grain. But the website used to say they included triticale. Triticale is a hybrid grain between wheat and rye. And they, that used to be one of the standard things about Blackland uh, with their bourbons and their rye is that they included triticale. That's gone from the website. I actually called uh, the owner uh, late last summer, so it's been several months ago, and said, hey, 
what happened to the Trudy Kale? It's not on your website anymore. And he says they still use it. It's just not on the website, and he's going to fix that. Well, I just checked the website. It's not fixed, so I don't know. Does this have triticale in it? I'm not sure. Is it all Texas rye? I think so. So is there any corn in it? I don't know. I don't know what the mash bill is. I don't know what's in this bottle. A little bit of a mystery. Goody Goody lists this for $41.59. Total Wine only has the 83 proof version on their website. Specs lists this uh, list the 83 proof, but not this one, but I bought this at Specs, so I know Specs has it. It's just not on their website. Liquor store websites are always inadequate. I get, I mean, it's hard to keep a website up, but, you know, sales. So I don't mean to be harsh there. So now, let's start this competition, and we always start with appearance. On the left... This one's a little bit lighter than the one on the right. What does that tell me? Well, I think the one on the right must be Balconis because I've had a lot of Balconis. I mean, this is my second bottle and I'm halfway done with it. Balconis is a very dark whiskey. Most of their products are very dark. So I'm going with this one. Now, uh, I'm going to say this is Blackland. So let me switch these around here to match the bottles. So appearance advantage goes to this one, which is now on my left. Okay. And I'm thinking I've got it by the Balconis bottle. I'm thinking that's the uh, Balconis. Nose. Let's start here with the one on the right, the lighter colored one. I'm getting a little bit of rye spice, a little bit of mustiness. <coughs> that smells actually pretty good. I mean, I, my nose is inadequate. I, most bourbons I can't smell at all. Rye's I can usually smell something and this it smells like rye. It's not real strong. I mean, it's, it's there, but it's not real strong. It's one on my left. Okay, now this is a little bit different. I'm not so much getting the rice spice notes. I'm getting the uh, Texas funk. There's a sweetness there, but Texas funk. Barrel char. Because of Texas climate, it does strange things to whiskeys, which I love. So, a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of barrel char. <coughs> but uh, for the rye spice nose, I'm going to say this one's got the advantage, the one on the right. So now we'll go ahead and taste. I'll start with the one on the right. These are both 100 proof. Wow. This starts off with good rye flavor. You get a wonderful eruption of tingles and, and burn. And, a, and it's a good burn. I love the burn. This is not an this is not a ethanol burn. This is, you know, boy, it just explodes with burn. And then it moves into a spice note that's like cinnamon maybe something else mint cinnamon and mint it's got a nice lingering tingle from the the spices the burn the hundred proof is really perfect for this and that's just uh Wow. See, for the rules, what I'm looking for is rye spice. 
that's heavy on the rye spice that, that's pretty good nice and spicy wow that's gonna be hard to beat gotta have my Tapo Chico at hand to cleanse my palate okay the next one on the left and I think Due to the color and the nose, I'm thinking this is the Balconis. The rice spice leads the way there. Oh, wow. But then it is covered with the... Uh, the barrel char and the finish is chocolate moving into coffee wow that's amazing so the rye spice is up front but then this just evolves into chocolate and coffee that's I've never really gotten that before and again I've had a over the years, this is my second bottle, and I'm halfway done. But And I've heard people talk about getting chocolate and coffee and whiskeys. And I rarely do that, but this time it happened. And there's a, there is a lingering rye flavor, lingering coffee, the lingering barrel char, which I call the Texas funk. The Texas climate is so extreme that when you age your whiskeys in the climate, in other words, not a climate-controlled warehouse, but exposed to uh, the heat and cold, it does amazing things to whiskeys. And so I can tell you that the one on the right, this lighter one, climate-controlled warehouse. One on my left, nope, exposed to the elements. Let me try it again. Wow. Definitely chocolate and coffee on the on the finish. This is going to be hard to decide. I mean, I've already stated the Balconis is my favorite rye. So it's favored to win the whole tournament. However, the rules that I imposed on this tournament where I am really focused on rye flavor I'm gonna have to say that Blackland wins with the rye flavor that that's just amazing the the Balconis has got so many other flavors going on with it that the rye is obscured and so what I'm looking for in this tournament is rye flavor. Blackland wins. There you go. The two entries by Blackland have both won in their initial matchup. Okay, so that's the winner, Blackland Rye. Uh, but I got to tell you, like I said, the, what's going to happen at the end of the tournament is the loser's bracket is going to have different rules. And it's going to be based on total flavor and how much I like the whiskey. And so we'll see how that ends up. <clears throat> All right, next week, Cotton Hollow Rye 101 versus Tawakero Malted Rye 105. That's going to be the contenders for the next episode of Stab the Dragon and the Texas Whiskey Tournament. Out here.